Tournament extraordinary drama last night. Pelicans and Lakers. It's the youngsters against the grand old man, the king. They are watching the trophy, and this was LeBron James putting on a show. Look at the stretch he puts together. At one point, LeBron scores 11 consecutive Lakers points, and he is knocking down threes from all over the building. I mean, that one is literally from the logo. Again, in total, it's 11 consecutive Laker points for LeBron James, who was four for four uh, from three-point range on the night. Just took this game over completely. It was a game in the first quarter, and then by no means was it anymore. They exploded in the second, put it away in the third, and in the end, LeBron would only have to play 22 and a half minutes, still putting 30 points on the board, and the Lakers pull away for a huge win. Here's LeBron throwing it up. Anthony Davis had 16 and 15 on the night, and so they win it 133 to 89 to advance to the in-season final. Hey, coach, how about LeBron? So I'll just stick to one word, extraordinary, otherworldly. Dan, That's two. I know. I know, Dan. <laughs> a one of one. That's a phrase. That's not a word. LeBron James, 22 <laughs> days from now, will be 39 years old. Monica McNutt, I don't know what to say. I mean, what we're what, what we're watching here, it, it is beyond historic. What do we say about what we are seeing from LeBron James right now? Well, Greeny, I've decided that we need to get rid of the word OLD and we need to call him the most successfully tenured NBA player currently uh. in the league. Because every time he steps out on the court and is healthy, he continues to mystify with what he's able to do. What I thought was actually spectacular about last night is obviously he set the tempo in terms of I want to win this game. I'm going to show my guys how we're going to go about doing it. But you mentioned it. The fact that he's able to play less than 23 minutes and then the cast around him is able to get quality minutes and what all players playing in the end season tournament have described as a playoff like atmosphere to me only bodes well. And it looks very reminiscent of how we saw this team look last spring when they started to really find their stride. Absolutely. I mean, they look really good, but I just want to make one more point about him. There have been other great, all-time greats who've played to this age. Michael Jordan came back and played at this age. Kareem played at this age, and others have. At no point were any of them the best player in the league. Monica, I, I think, mm -hmm. I believe LeBron James is still the best, right this minute, is the best player in the world, and he's almost 39 years old. I mean, I completely understand how you get there, Greeny, because he continues to put on such um, effective displays of both his basketball IQ, his athletic ability. We saw, we saw him shift gears yesterday. It wasn't like he just stood behind the three-point line and launched threes, which in and of itself would still be impressive. But when he's getting to the paint, when he's showing the physicality that he still has, when he's making a guy like Zion look like he's completely disinterested and he's supposed to be next up in the league, like, I totally understand where you're coming from. And I had this conversation with Kevin Durant at Phoenix a couple Couple weeks ago he kind of said we got to get rid of just labeling guys old based on their age or injury pro if you're still being effective as lebron is you deserve the credit absolutely right meantime the early game last night the early semifinal, which you saw here on espn was a fabulous game the budding superstar tyrese halliburton against the great Giannis and company. This one was great. Fourth quarter, eight minutes to go. Halliburton throws it up. Obi Toppin throws it down. It's a one-point game. Midway through the fourth, Giannis. Look at him go through the lane. The Euro step, 37 and 10 for Giannis last night. Now we're two minutes to play in the game. Pacers by three. It's Halliburton taking it strong. That extends the lead to five. Tyrese Halliburton, 27 points, 15 assists, Zero turnovers, and this one was the dagger. And look at him doing the Dame celebration. Pacers win it, and they advance to the championship game. Monica, who do we like tomorrow night? Lakers, Pacers for the oh title. Oh, my. Gertie, I did not think that this would be this difficult. You're going to have a clash of two styles, right? Like the, the Pacers up and down. It's beautiful. It's fun. But there's a physicality that the Lakers play. And if this thing truly feels like a playoff atmosphere, they say you need experience, so I'm going Lakers. Me too. Monica, stay close. Thanks for getting up with us here. We are just getting started. Back to work. Welcome in former NBA Coach of the Year, Avery Johnson, CBS Sports NBA insider Bill Ryder. Bill, what LeBron and the Lakers did to Zion on the Pelicans was embarrassing. They outscored him 43-17 to in the third quarter. How would you describe what the Lakers did to the Pelicans in this game? 
a, a humiliation in the inaugural sem second semifinal game. And this was, at least I think when you got to the second, third quarter, a tale of a team that cared in the Lakers and a team in the Pelicans that absolutely gave up. And we talked about this before the game, and it really played to script. The Lakers came to play. They want to win this thing. LeBron James was obviously phenomenal. Anthony Davis was outstanding. He even took some threes in Mega, but whatever. Tried some, <laughs> some of those three-point shots. The supporting cast was really good. The defensive energy felt like we were in a playoff game. The Lakers wanted to win this thing. The Pelicans really abdicated. And then I think Coach led to a, a pretty embarrassing outcome for a team that had played well up to this point. And after the first quarter where the Pelicans had a one-point lead, the Lakers just dominated the rest of this game. And specifically, LeBron James set the tone with his three-point shooting, with his cuts to the baskets, but his defense. His defense on Zion Williamson, who also struggled from the free throw line. He was one for six from the free throw line. Zion Williamson struggled because he couldn't make an outside shot. Uh, and when he got past LeBron James, Anthony Davis came over to support. This was a textbook scouting report defensively by LeBron James and the Lakers in the way they basically just took Zion Williamson out of this game tonight. Yeah, New Orleans offense was stagnant. Stagnant. They score under 100 points. The Lakers advanced to play the most exciting team in the NBA right now. Tyrese Halliburton, the Pacers. Halliburton hit a clutch three with less than a minute to go to lead his team past Giannis and the Bucks. Over the last two games, Avery, Halliburton with 53 points, 28 assists, zero turnovers. The other point guard in this game, Damian Lillard. Uh, his points, 24 points on 7 of 20. Apparently, Avery, it wasn't Dame time. It was Tyrese time. Well, in terms of uh, point guards, Tyrese Halliburton and myself were the best two best point guards in the building tonight. That sounds like my assist to turnover ratio. <laughs> but I was really impressed with this kid. And again, 15 assists tonight, no turnovers. He made some big shots. He went to the Dame Dollar sign on his wrist after he made a shot over Brooke Lopez in an isolated situation. But I was also impressed with the quality depth of the Indiana Pacers tonight specifically their bench that outscored the Milwaukee Bucks 43 to 13 and the way they can shoot the three-point shot Rick Carlisle's got this team humming especially on the offensive end of the floor uh, I'm with you let me just give a little more love some more flowers to Halliburton this these games we've talked about this they don't feel like regular season games they're, they're not regular season games it felt important it felt special it felt stressful and when the Bucks made that comeback they scored 43 points in that third quarter I for one thought okay here we go Milwaukee he's going to win. What a cute little story by the Pacers. Mm. Halliburton's ability to be unfazed, mm. to match all that momentum, to dominate late in the game, that's what superstars do. And I think that impact and the impact it might have on his, on his team, I think it could be lasting over the course of the rest of the season. He has been awesome in this in-season tournament. So it's the Pacers and Lakers for the NBA Cup. The players on the championship team each get $500,000. The Lakers are three-and-a-half-point favorites on Saturday night in Vegas. Avery, who's taking home the money and the title? Well, first of all, I hope Bronny James is not playing on Saturday because LeBron James said he's got to miss the game if, Le if Bronny plays in his first game at USC. So since Bronny's not playing in that game and LeBron James is going to be in here in the building at T-Mobile, King James and Anthony Davis and the Lakers take home the championship. I I'm 100% <laughs> with you. I, I think LeBron's experience, his hunger, the, the, the way that he played, the Pacers are going to put up a fight. Halliburton's the real deal, but we just saw the Lakers. Lakers absolutely humiliate and destroy a pretty good Pelicans teams. I'm with you, Coach. I think the Lakers crowned themselves the, the first champions of this in-season tournament. Well, LeBron said let's fight about this game, and it wasn't much of a fight against the Pelicans, a 44-point win. I sure hope it's a fight on Saturday because I'll tell you what, I love this Pacers team right now. They're the most exciting team in the NBA against the team that everybody loves in LeBron and the Lakers. I'm rooting for the Pacers. I'm also rooting for you two men, Bill Ryder, Avery Johnson, here on CBS Sports HQ. Thank you, men. Great stuff from them from T-Mobile Arena as we set the scene for Saturday's NBA Cup. Pacers and Lakers. Last two meetings between these two teams have been decided by one point. Lakers won for the last six YouTube của mình và ngày hôm nay mình sẽ review cho các bạn một câu chuyện trò chơi búp bê nằm trong quyển 10 của Doraemon. Mình xin mời các bạn cùng mình lắng nghe câu chuyện. 
Và mong các bạn hãy theo dõi và ủng hộ kênh giúp mình Này Nobita, cái gì? Có chuyện gì? Nói thẳng ra đi nào Có điện thoại gọi cậu đấy Ha ha, điện thoại à Đừng có sạo Cậu tưởng dễ đánh lừa tớ thế hả? À? Có điện thoại gọi cậu thật mà Sumio đấy Điết tai quá Con làm gì thế? Mau ra nghe điện thoại đi chứ Ngay cả mẹ cũng nói dối Ê, mẹ nói dối con hồi nào Sao? Cậu không siêu tầm tem nữa à? Cậu cho tớ bộ siêu tầm của cậu á? Bây giờ tớ đến luôn à? Cảm ơn, tớ không lấy đâu. Đừng hỏng lừa tớ. Nobita, cậu có nhà không? Tớ mới được cho nhiều bánh lắm. Nhưng một mình ăn không hết nên tớ sẽ chia bớt cho cậu. Cậu tới lấy ngay nhé. Chào tạm biệt các bạn. Chào mừng các bạn đã đến với kênh youtube của mình Và ngày hôm nay mình sẽ review cho các bạn Một câu chuyện thuốc viên trốn chạy kiểu động vật Nằm trong quyển 10 của Doraemon Mình xin mời các bạn cùng mình lắng nghe câu chuyện Và mong các bạn hãy theo dõi và ủng hộ kênh của mình Ta đi chơi bóng trẻ nhé Nobita lại đây mẹ nhờ tí con chơi với em mít một tẹo giúp mẹ anh chơi với em nha đồ chơi em mang từ nhà đến đấy trò búp bê á bọn anh là con trai mà ai lại chơi cái trò ấy novita con chơi với nó một tí không được sao chẳng may bị ai nhìn thấy thì toi đời anh ơi cầm lấy búp bê lên đi novita ơi chưa ra sân bóng à Xê tụi mình để nó nhìn thấy thì kỳ lắm Hai em búp bê đang làm gì thế Mau vào nhà đi Buồn cười quá Mình dẫn bạn bè đến bắt quả tang mới được Nguy rồi Các con phải chơi với em chứ Dạ về Video của mình đến đây là kết thúc Xin chào các bạn Và hẹn gặp lại các bạn ở các video tiếp theo Chào mừng các bạn đã đến với kênh youtube của mình và ngày hôm nay mình sẽ review cho các bạn một câu chuyện thuốc viên hóa mình có thứ tự trong quyển 28 của Doraemon. Mình xin mời các bạn cùng mình lắng nghe câu chuyện và mong bạn theo dõi và ủng hộ kênh của mình. Và hôm nay mình sẽ review cho các bạn câu chuyện cuộn băng đường chân trời trong quyển 28 của Doraemon. Và mình xin mời các bạn cùng mình lắng nghe câu chuyện. Và mong các bạn ủng hộ và like, chia sẻ kênh của mình. Và hôm nay mình sẽ review cho các bạn một câu chuyện đề can anh em trong quyển 28 của Doraemon. Mình xin mời các bạn cùng mình lắng nghe câu chuyện và mong các bạn theo dõi và ủng hộ video của mình. Và ngày hôm nay mình sẽ review cho các bạn một câu chuyện biển đánh cháo số nhà. Trong tập 28 của Doraemon, mình xin mời các bạn cùng mình lắng nghe câu chuyện và mong các bạn ủng hộ theo dõi và chia sẻ kênh của mình. Ồ, oh, Siroka, vẽ con ngựa có cánh, có cánh đẹp quá. Nó là ngựa trời trong thần thoại Hy Lạp có tên là Digasu đấy. Ngựa có cánh Ấy à Ha ha Thế mà hồi bé tớ cứ nghĩ Nó có thật Nghe cả đến tận bây giờ Thì thoảng tớ vẫn mơ Thấy mình cỡi trên lưng ngựa thần trắng muốt Tung cánh bay giữa bầu trời xanh bao la Shizuka lãng mạn quá nhỉ Ha ha đúng thế Này tớ có thể biến ước mơ của cậu ấy Thành sự thật phân nửa đấy Bằng cách nào cơ Ở trang trại của bạn Bố tớ cũng có một chú ngựa tên là Bigasu Nó màu trắng tót và rất hiền Tớ sẽ dẫn cậu tới đó cưỡi thử 
cậu nói thật chứ Nhất định phải cho tớ cưỡi thử nhé Thế thì có gì ghê gớm Tớ sẽ giúp cậu cưỡi ngựa Trời xịn hẳn hoi Chắc Doraemon làm được việc đó Mình tin là vậy Doraemon ơi Nó không có nhà rồi Rồi ạ, à, đúng lúc quan trọng Con mèo nào lạc vào nhà mình thế này Quái Nó biến thành máy bay rồi Doraemon Tớ nghe có tiếng chuột kêu trên mái nhà Nên tớ biến thành con mèo Để dọa lũ chuột ấy mà Sao cậu biến thành biến hình được à? Thành cái gì cũng được à? Video của mình đến đây là kết thúc. Xin chào các bạn.